Hi and welcome to this video about quantitative, that means using numbers, solving problems involving acceleration. So let's just dive right in and take a look at number one. It says a car accelerates from rest to a speed of 10 meters per second in five seconds. First of all, make a well-labeled uh, diagram of the situation. Well, we have different ways of doing diagrams. How about just a really quick, uh, what do we call these again? Mm motion maps. Let's do one of these motion maps here. So it starts from rest. Um, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to say, first of all, that this is going to be my positive direction. It doesn't say in here that it's going in the positive direction, but I'm just going to say, let's keep it simple. Uh, let's say it starts at the origin. We'll start it as simple as possible, and it's accelerating. So this is kind of what acceleration looks like. Five seconds. One, two. Oh, actually, I need to put my dots a little closer. So that'd be t equals zero, t equals one, t equals two, t equals 3, t equals 4, t equals 5. So I get, made it a little bit extra. And then my, my velocity vectors would be kind of getting larger and larger. Like that. So that looks pretty good. I, I would, I think that's enough for my well-labeled diagram. I could also, I don't know, make a picture of a car and say, oh, it's moving, you know, starts at rest and it's it's moving this way and Another little diagram. I think the motion map tells more of a story. Um, make a well-labeled graphical representation of this situation. Graphical. Now, it's kind of half done for you in that there is a velocity time graph listed already. I just want to rem remind us about, okay, so there we, we can make a, a velocity time graph. We could make a position time graph. And we got it really fancy. We could actually even make an acceleration versus time graph. Uh, in this case, it's starting from rest and it's going up. So this is probably the way I would draw the velocity time graph as a sketch. A position time graph, it would kind of look like this. Uh, and the acceleration time graph, um, it doesn't tell you that it's speeding up at a constant acceleration. Like it could it could be that it goes really slow for a while and at the very end it speeds up but i think let's assume i think in all of our questions here we're going to assume a, a constant acceleration so in other words our, our vt graphs when there's constant acceleration that'd be a constant slope so that means that on our vt graph we're going to have straight lines We can still have curved lines on our position time graph if we're going to make one, but we're going to assume that it's going to be a straight line. Do you see what I mean? Like the car could have gone like, you know, stayed slow for a long time and then just hurried up at the very end because the information it tells us is that at the end it was going 10 meters per second. So we're, we're making this assumption here and I think I'm going to tell you to make it, make those straight lines. So that has a constant slope. So my acceleration versus time graph. Now, just as a reminder, the thing that we're going to do all the time is we're going to say, hey, so the slope, the slope from here is what? What's the definition of the slope of a VT graph is acceleration. Acceleration is the rise over the run on a VT graph. And the other thing that's awesome is that this area under the line, the area uh, is equal to displacement, which is the change in position. So it doesn't necessarily tell us where we started, but once we decide and we we chose the origin, uh, we can say that. So that's, those are the two things we're going to be using. We're going to be using this fact that the area is equal to, under the VT graph is equal to displacement, and the slope is equal to acceleration. So uh, let's try to answer the next part of the question. It says, List given quantities. Oh, we didn't finish making our VT graph. Let's do a better job of our VT graph. So it says uh, five seconds. Okay, so if we label this, there's 10 things on here. If I go zero, one, two, three, four, we can do, make a nice big graph. Goes to five, and then this ends up being at 10 here. I'll label the middle one just for good measure here. Uh, you could probably use a ruler and do a better job than what I'm going to do freehand here. Okay, so there is my VT graph. Nice. Okay. Check. List given quantities and quantities to find 
as you determine. Okay, so I'm going to tell you when you get to that part, there's five. There's five things. There's the uh, there's the initial velocity, which starts from rest, so that's going to be zero. Uh, there's the final velocity uh, that we know, 10 meters per second. There's how much time went by. So the change in time from the beginning to the end is five seconds. Okay, uh, the average acceleration. Well, we don't know what that is yet. So I'm going to put A equals question mark. And how far does it travel? Well, that would be answered by what is the displacement. Okay, so just a reminder that when you do this, there's five altogether. Five uh, items here to do. If you know that there's five, and you, th that way you'll know if you forgot one. Um, so there's two velocities because the initial and the final, how much time went by, the average or constant acceleration, and what the displacement was. So uh, again, well, area, all right, let's do the slope one first. So acceleration is going to be equal to the slope, which is rise over run on this graph. So looking at the graph, this slope. The rise, which is the change in velocity. How much did the velocity change by? 10 meters per second. Over the run, how much time went by? So I'll write this maybe down here. Change of 10 meters per second divided by 5 seconds went by. So when I multiply 10 divided by 5, I get 2. And my answer is meters per second squared. So I'm going to go and hey, replace this with an answer. I'm going to say, hey, I got this answer now it is 2 meters per second squared. Okay, now moving on to the second part is how far did it travel in this time? That how far, that's the delta x business, and this is the area under the line. So I'm going to color it. So I'll color this line here. This is the fun part of class. You get to do a little bit of coloring, or at least I do. Okay, so it's that yellow. Now that coloring, that shape is a triangle. So I'm going to say here that my delta x is going to be equal to one half times the base times the height. What is the base? Well, the base is five seconds equals one half times five seconds. And the height in this case would be 10 meters per second. So I'll write 10 meters per second. So when I multiply that out, I get, well, I'll do a half times a 10 is five, five times five is 25. Notice what happens with the units. The seconds are going to cancel out, and we'll get 25 meters. And I'll put that one in there. 25 meters. 